All right, welcome back. So today we're going to study resistors in parallel. But before we do that, we're going to kind of write down a few things that we learned from the last period about resistors in series. So if we have resistors in series, what do they look like? We have resistors in series like this. <coughs> And if we have a current that is flowing down this path, down this wire, let's say we have 5 amps, and we have a 1 ohm resistor, and we have a 2 ohm resistor, and a 3 ohm resistor, and another 2 ohm resistor, then that's a, that's a 2. What are the voltage drops across each and every one? And also, what is the total resistance? And what happens when we keep adding extra resistances all in series? So you can see here that every time we add another one, we add them arithmetically, right? Because we know that the total resistance for series is just equal to the sum of all the, resistor, the resistors however many that there are. So here we have 1 plus 2, that's 3, plus another 3, that's 6, plus another 2, that's 8. So we have a total of 8 ohms. But um, what we need to understand is that every time we add an extra resistor, the resistance goes the resistance goes up so we'll say adding resistors increases the total resistance now this might seem pretty obvious after all look at this equation pretty straightforward the more you add the bigger it gets because you're adding them all up but I think it's it's valuable to express this and and articulate this so that it is in your co conscious mind um, also let's try and figure out a little bit more what are the voltage drops for each of these guys well we can use Ohm's law, V equals IR, to calculate the voltage drop across each and every resistor here. So, the current here is 5 amps times 1 ohm. Now we know that that means there's 5 volt drop from here to here. 5 times 1 is 5. For this one, we know that from here to here, we've got 5 amps again, right? I'm just using this equation here. 5 amps times 2 ohms. That means there's 10 volt drop across this second resistor. And I'm not going to write this out again, right? Essentially, 5 times 3 is 15 volts across this guy. And for this last one, 2 times or 5 times 2 is again 10 volts. Notice, <coughs> notice that the voltage drops across each and every one of these are different unless the resistances are the same. So for the one, we had a 5, 10, 15, and another 10 again because that's a 2 and that's a 2. So the voltage drops across each one is different for different resistors. So let's, ar let's articulate that as well. Let's express that in a, in a sentence. Um, and this is all for series, OK? This, er all the notes I'm putting down here, this is for series. Okay? 
Adding resistors increases the total resistance, yes. Okay, what else do we know here? Let's put a star here. What else do we know? Star. Uh, voltages are different. Voltage drops are different for uh, different resistors. Now, this might seem, again, like a very obvious thing to state, but I still think it's worth stating. Because you're going to see later that we can use some of these concepts to analyze circuits and make things much easier. There is one more um, kind of note that I want to explicitly express like the alliteration about these guys and that is that this 5 amps of current here is traveling through every single resistor it has nowhere to go except through each and every resistor so think you could think of this sometimes I like to use the analogy of water if the 5 amps is the amount of water flowing through this pipe then you can't destroy or create the water just like you can't destroy or create the current. That means it has to flow through each and every resistor as it is flowing down through the pipe. So let's express that here and say that the current through each resistor is the same. Okay, so let's quickly um, review what we've written down here. We'll state them again. Adding resistors increases the total resistance. Yep, okay, that's obvious. Voltage drops are different for different resistors. Okay, but the current through each resistor is the same. Now I'm going to underline the word same here because this is something that's really important to remember. Now that we have reviewed our, the stuff that we learned last period about resistors in series, we can now move on to resistors in parallel. Okay, actually, before we move on to resistors in parallel, I wanted to quickly go over this concept of, I know I've I've, I've touched on it in the previous lesson, but if we have a battery here and we have a resistor, it doesn't matter what the values are here. I mean, I, I guess I could give them a value. Let's say this is 12 volts and let's say this resistance is 6 ohms. Now we know that the current is going to be 12 divided by 6, which is 2 amps. But what I wanted to discuss here is the fact that the sum of the voltages in a loop is equal to 0. So if we take this point here, and so let's say the sum of the voltages in a loop equals zero. Um, you can also interpret this as saying like the change in voltage going in around is zero. But why? So let's take this point here. This is an arbitrary point on this in this circuit in the loop. And let's make another one very close to it. And now let's go from here, starting here, and let's go around, and let's go all the way around, and we'll end up here. Okay? So this is the start, and this is the end. 
and we're going around this way. So this is the negative side, this is the positive side. That means that the battery here, we have a gain. That means the voltage is going from a low of zero volts on this side. Here is zero. And on this side, we have positive 12 volts. So if you think of it as a, a this is a gain of 12 volts. That's going from here to here. Now, we're going to continue going around. And here is the high side of the battery and the low side. Sorry, not the battery, the resistor. This is the high side of the resistor. This is the low side. This side is also at 12 volts. Now, how do we know that? Because if we start here and we travel, do, 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 this point is connected with a conductor to this point. That means these two points are at the same electric potential. Electric potential is another word for voltage. That means if this point here is 12 volts, then this must also be 12 volts. On the other side, here, this point is connected to this point. So if this point is 0 volts on the negative side of the battery, that means this point here must also be at 0 volts. But since we're going across it in this direction, that means for the, for the resistor here, we're starting out at 12, and then we're dropping down to 0. So this is 12 volts, and then we end up at 0. That's a drop. So if you think of it now, if this is the gain and this is the drop, that means that essentially, if we start out with the gain of the battery, positive 12, and then the drop in the resistor, minus 12, well, that's equal to 0. So the sum, when you add them all up, it's equal to 0. So this, is we now pr kind of proved that. But I want you to understand that when we went across this loop, we started here, and then we ended up here at the top, right? We started at the bottom point, went all the way around, and ended up here. But essentially, we could also, since it's the same two points, we could start at the bottom and just go to the top and recognize that they're connected with a conductor so that they're at the same electric potential. They're at the same voltage. So if the that means there's no change in voltage, there's no change in voltage between these two points. The voltage change is zero. Okay? So when you make those two points infinitely close to each other, then you recognize that for any point on the circuit, if you go in a in a circle all the way around, the voltage gains must add up to the voltage losses and the total must be zero. Okay, so let's express that um, in a sentence here. So the, the uh, sentence or the, the, the wording of this that I chose to describe it is to say in a closed loop the total change in voltage is zero when you go all the way around the loop. Okay, now that we've finished that let's now start on uh, resistors in parallel. Okay, so here is a circuit which you would probably look at and say, well, we've done this before. Here's a 2 ohm resistor and a 12 volt battery. Obviously, we can calculate the current to be 12 divided by 2, which is 6 amps. No problem there. Um, but I'm going to change it, so I'm going to uh, erase what I just wrote there. And I'm going to add another resistor, which is going to change the circuit. Now, I'm not going to add it in series on either side of the two, but instead, I'm going to go like this. Right, let's start on this side. We'll go up over, we'll add another resistor here, 
and then we'll connect it like that. And this one, I'll make 4 ohms. That is what parallel resistors look like. Now, there is another way to draw this, and I could draw it like this. So these two circuits, and so here's my 4 and, and uh, here's my 2 and my 12 volt battery, these two circuits are identical. There's no difference between them. It's just the way that I've expressed them. And I, I want you to be aware that they are the same and that you can draw them either way and I want you to recognize that. Okay. Um, for that matter, I could even uh, draw it in in like another way, and and they'd all be the same. Okay, I changed my mind. I'm not going to draw it a third way. I think this is sufficient. Um, what we need to understand now is what is the current that is flowing here, and let's. It doesn't matter which one we, we look at, it; they're the same, but, but I can use analogies here. But what we need to figure out is, what's the current, what's the total current, what current is flowing through each resistor, and what is the voltage across each resistor. Now, before we continue here, I want to remind you about the concept of where the voltages, how we figured out the voltage when we follow a path. So let's take this point right here. We know that this voltage here is 12 volts and we know that this voltage here, let's say, is zero volts, okay? Because there's a, there's a gain of 12 in the battery. Now, if we follow this conductor from here do, do, do. Let's, let's look at my pen here as I travel. Do, 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 all the way, and we go up here to this junction. And this is an important point. This junction here, the current splits. Some of it goes to the 2, and some of it goes to the 4. Now, let's pretend for a minute that, oh, actually, let's, let's, let's leave that for a second. We'll come back to that concept. We know that the 2 offers less resistance than the 4. So just like water flowing down a hill, electricity likes to flow in the easiest way possible. And the 2 ohms offers less resistance than the 4, so you would think that more of the current would go through the smaller resistor because it's easier to travel through it how much and also we don't know what the total is here we're gonna get there in a minute but what I want to show you here is that this voltage here at 12 is going to be the same voltage here at 12 volts why because these two points are connected by a conductor therefore they must be at the same electric potential and I'll, 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 put, I'll make the dots a little brighter. This point and this point. Okay? In addition, that first 12, and you can get to this point here, is also at 12. Why? Because you can travel along that direction. So if I just change colors for a minute, and what I mean is I can go from here to here without passing through a resistor, and I can go from here to here without passing through a resistor. So therefore, those two other points must be at the same electric potential as the right-hand side of the battery. Let me erase those two lines now. Now let's do the same thing for the other side. This point must be at the same electric potential as this point. 
and this point must be at the same electric potential as this point. So that means those two points must also be at zero. So that means this point is at zero, and that means this point is at zero. Now you see, I can now determine the voltage across each and every resistor. It's the same. It's 12 volts. So this is actually a characteristic that we can write down as a general rule for all resistors in parallel. And let's write it down here. Resistors in parallel We wrote down resistors in parallel have the same voltage. That means the 4 and the 2 both have 12 volts across them. OK. Notice that is the exact opposite, or the it's different from resistors in series. Notice that we said that the current through each resistor is the same. Right? But here, in parallel, the voltage is the same. The same voltage. Now, if we know that the voltage is 12 volts for this guy, let's calculate the current. So let's say I equals V over R for this first guy. What's V? 12 divided by 4 is 3. So that means we have 3 amps of current here. And let's do the same thing for the other guy. I equals V over R. And it's 12 volts as well for this 2 ohm resistor. And we put 2 and that's equal to 6. That means this guy is 6 amps. Now, let's go back to this junction here, right here. Now, we know that we have current flowing into this junction. Okay. Now, if you, if you look at this junction from this side, we have here 3 amps. And over here, we have... 6 amps. Notice we have more current going through the smaller resistor, which makes sense. But also, that at this junction here, you have 3 plus 6 coming out. That's a total of 9 amps of current coming out of this junction. One of Kirchhoff's rules says that whatever current goes into a junction must come out. Knowing this, that means that we must have going in 9 because 3 plus 6 equals 9. Now we know the total current here is 9 amps. You see how we were able to figure that out? And we didn't even we didn't even have to calculate the total resistance. But let's do that now. Let's calculate the total resistance. How do we do that? So we need an equation for this. So for parallel resistors, the total resistance is equal to the reciprocal of each resistor, however many that there are, all reciprocated. That means that the total resistance, for, in our case, since we only have two resistors, would be so I'm going to put a box, by the way, before I continue. This is the general equation. Unlike before, where in resistors in parallel, where all we had to do here was just add them together, resistors in parallel, uh, that you know, the top one was for series. In parallel, the equation is much different. It is the reciprocal sums 
all reciprocated. So if we, let's try and do this one for these two that we have. It's 1 over 4 plus 1 over 2 all reciprocated. Well, what is, what is the answer for this? Take out your calculators and try it. Okay, so the answer, if you have a calculator, will be 4 over 3, or as a decimal, it would be 1.3 repeating. But I'm going to express it here as a, uh, an improper fraction. Okay, and, and I'm going to remember to put my units, which is ohms. All right, that's my total resistance. Let's now calculate my total current. That's equal to my total voltage divided by my total resistance. My total voltage is 12 volts divided by 4 third ohms. And I'm going to get exactly, if you work this out with a calculator, you get what? So the answer to this, as it should be, is 9 amps. So you see, when we calculated our total resistance and divided that into our total voltage of 12 volts, we did in fact get 9 amps. But notice that we already were able to calculate that before by adding up the two currents in each of the arms of our parallel series, or sorry, of our parallel resistors. 3 plus 6 is 9, and this gives us the 9. Now, what if we didn't have this 3 and the 6? How would we be able to calculate how much goes down each side? In order to do this, there is something called uh, current division. And current division will work for two resistors in parallel. And, and the equation, we, we should actually like denote these here. Um, actually, let me kind of move it over this way. Okay, and then I can do it here. Okay, so that way you can see <coughs> everything. Let's call this, let's, let's change colors here. And um, let me pick, let me, let's say blue. Let's say, let's say this is uh, one and this is two, okay? That means that I1 is equal to, and what you do, this is simply a ratio. And I'll tell you the rule, and this is how I memorize this. I want you to memorize it in the same way. All I do is I take the opposite resistor. So if this is a 1, the opposite one is a 2. And then I divide it by the total, R1 plus R2. And then I multiply it by the total current. And the equation for the other guy, I2, is the same except you do the same rule. You take the opposite resistor to the two, which is the one, divide it by the total, R1 plus R2, and multiply it by the total current. So, if I did that in this case, let's create some room here for ourselves, that's gonna give me R2 is, so notice here's the two, okay, that's a four, 4 ohms divided by 2 plus 4 times what's my total current? I figured that out to be 9 times 9. Now, what does that give me? 4 divided by 6 times 9 is, try it on your calculator. Go ahead and do it now. That gives me six amps. Now, which is this? This is I1. So let's see where that is. Here is here is one. That means I should have six, and look, oh my God, 
It's exactly what I had before. There is my 6 amps. There is my 6 amps. Okay, let's do the other one now. Let's do the top one. Okay, path 2. So that's the opposite resistor, so that's the 2 divided by 2 plus 4 times 9, which is the total current going in. 2 divided by 6 is 1 third. 1 third times 9 is 3. Ta-da! 3 amps, 3 amps. They match. So I was able to use current division, and there is the equations for current division right in front of you. And it doesn't matter whether I'm looking at this image or this image, it's going to be the same. So this is something really, really handy to memorize, and it's very easy to remember. I'll repeat it one more time. Remember, it's always the opposite, the other side resistor divided by the total multiplied by the total current. Okay, so if you want to calculate I1, it's R2 divided by the total times the total current. If you want to calculate I1, it's the opposite resistor, R1, divided by the total times the current, the total current. Okay, now that we've done that, you've, now you can see how we can solve not only for this 3 and the 6 using current division and calculate the 9 amps using the total resistance, but also the alternate solution, alternative solution, was simply to recognize that the voltage for each of these resistors in parallel was equal to 12 volts, and then from there, calculate the current going through each, the 3 and the 6, and then from there, we could calculate the total current, must have been 9, which is the sum going into the junction, and we were able to solve this circuit in two distinct separate ways. Okay? And I want you to see that it's possible to solve it either way and you're going to get the right answer. So, let's add one more statement now that we've kind of figured all this out. Let's add that the current through each through each resistor is different unless the oops uh, I didn't I messed up that word there Unless, of course, the resistors are equal. In other words, if this was a 2 and this was a 2, then they would have the same current flowing through them. But the current through each different resistor is different. Notice that that is very analogous to what we had before for series where we said the voltage for each resistor is different. Here, the voltages are the same, but the current is different. Okay? And the last note that we're going to observe for parallel is one more piece of information. And that, this one's kind of like a little bit sneaky. And um, let's actually kind of move it over here this way a little bit and let's draw this again. So I'll start out with the two and we'll start out with, with just our battery because I want to, there's a lot of noise on that diagram over there. This is a two ohm and this is a 12 volt. Now, we know 
that if we just had this circuit here, there's going to be 6 amps of current flowing, 12 divided by 2. But what if we added, notice, okay, notice that when we added the 4, so if we just leave this like this, we're going to get I equals 6, right? How did I know that? 12 divided by 2 equals 6. Notice that when I added the 4 here, I ended up having 9 amps. More current flowing when I add another resistor. Notice that this is very, very, very different from what I had before. When you add, so when you go back to resistors in uh, here's a 2 and here's a 4 when you add more resistors you you're not so what you're doing is you're actually reducing the the current so like for example in this situation if I add the the 4 in series now what's the total resistance it's 6 so now my total current is going to be 12 divided by 6, which is going to give me 2 amps. Well, you notice now that this 2 is less than, well, th this isn't actually 6 anymore. This is a 9. So let's kind of cross this out and we have to recognize that this is now we've, we've calculated it over here right this was 9 so when we add the 4 here this now this current is now 9 amps notice that 2 is less than 9 but more importantly if we go back to the original drawing so if I draw the original here You'll see what my point is now. I think it'll be clear. So we can add the 4 in two different ways. We can add the 4 in series here. Oops, misspelled that. Hold on. Got it. So adding the 4 in series here, and then in this direction, you add the 4 in parallel. Notice that originally, what was our original current? That was 12 divided by 2, which is, oops, which is 6 amps. That was our original. Notice that adding it in series decreases, right? So our current here is reduced. Current goes down. Okay, so from 6 to 2. On the other hand, when we added the 4 in parallel, our current goes up. From 6 to 9. Okay, so here current goes up. On the left hand side, current goes down. So this is important because what we need to understand here is that when we add the 4 in series, we're actually creating more of a barrier to the current. But when we add resistors in parallel, we're actually creating yet another path for the current to travel down. In other words, initially it was all going through the 2, but now some of it can go through the 4. And if we added yet another resistor, 
it becomes, let's say, you know, this one doesn't matter what it is, let's say it was a, a six or something, then it creates yet another path for the current to flow, and so the total resistance becomes less. In fact, what's really interesting here is that when we, so if we kind of erase this six here, if we just look at the total resistance for this uh, added four in parallel, what did we get? We got four over three. Now what is four over three? That's 1.3 repeating. Guess what? 1.3 repeating is less than two. That means the resistance for this guy, the resistance for this total resistance is less than without, with, with, without the four at all. So adding the four, now you know that the total resistance has to be less than the smallest resistor in the parallel. So in other words, the smallest resistor in parallel here is the two. So I know that my total resistance must be less than two. So that's a way to check, but also it's an interesting point to, to kind of make note of in that what is going on when you're adding a resistor in parallel. You're re reducing the total resistance regardless of what value it is. The total resistance is always going to be less than the smallest individual resistor in that parallel configuration. So uh, wrapping this up, we can now say that the total resistance is reduced when you add resistors in parallel, but adding resistors in series over here, the total resistance is increased. It went from two to six when we added the four, but over here we went from two to 1.3 repeating, thereby reducing it by adding the four in parallel. Okay, I think that's where we'll stop today.